Welcome, everyone, to another edition of the Ryan and Russ Show. On today's episode, we're previewing the West Virginia Mountaineers and taking on Mount St. Mary's for the start of college basketball, and we'll see what's going on in the rest of the Big 12. All ahead on the Ryan and Russ Show. And we welcome you back to your source for West Virginia sports. I'm Rambling Rush. He's Moneyline Mac. We are the Ryan and Rush Show, and we're getting right into it. Ryan, it's it's your favorite time of the year. Happy basketball season, brother. Yeah, Rush. I woke up this morning like a kid on Christmas. College basketball, I mean, we got Baylor, Mississippi Valley State tipping off here in about an hour and change. So games all day, but really fired up for uh, these Mountaineers, and we're going to preview them all year long. Absolutely. And we'll, we'll talk about the rest of the Big 12, too. Always want to get to West Virginia first, of course. Um, Ryan, as we – so. Mount St. Mary's is coming to town tonight. We have a history of playing and Bob Huggins is five and zero against Mount St. Mary's career as a West Virginian. What, when you kind of start the first, second, third game of the season, early in the season, especially non-conference, and maybe you're not used to playing these guys and you don't have a lot of film on it. What's the mindset going into games like this is the former video coordinator for West Virginia. So obviously this is a buy game. So we pay Mount St. Mary's to come play us. So because we're supposed to win this game, we're in the big 12, they're in the MAAC. But like when you're doing research on these teams, there's not a lot of film, but with this team, they're unique because they bring back four starters from last year. So there is a lot of film. What I like to do when I was cutting film for uh, West Virginia and then South Carolina as well, back in the day is I would like to take the conference tournament or the last game of the regular season. So the last three games from last season, just to see what the team had become at the end of the year, but then also go back to the beginning of the year. Cause you're playing them to start the year. So mm-hmm. they're going to put in new stuff down the road as the season goes along, just like hugs will. And I want to see them. How did they match up with uh, a power five athleticism? So last year they played Kentucky. They lost by 25 at Kentucky. That would be the game I would look at. How did they match up? Well, Oscar Shibway, everybody Mountaineer fans know that name. How did they match up with him? Probably not very well because he's 6'9", 260, and they have mid-major athletes. And then another one like St. Joseph. So it would be their last three games and then two high majors just to see how they match up with the size and athleticism of this level. And as we go into this game and using that method, what do you see from this Mount St. Mary's teams? In West Virginia, they enter this game as 17-point favorites. I see a veteran group. Uh, they bring back four stars, like I said, good guards led by Jalen Benjamin and DeAndre Thomas. And they have a really good transfer at the four position, George Tinsley from uh, Binghamton. So I think this is going to be a unique test for the Mountaineers because we don't have anybody coming back other than Keity Johnson mm-hmm. and uh, and Kobe Johnson and Seth Wilson. But like the only guy that's played major minutes was uh, Keity. So I think it's, it's going to be interesting to see, especially with Mount St. Mary's having four out of their five starters be seniors it's going to be a good test tonight yeah, i think so too and we had ethan bach on it episode came out last friday on youtube we're going to post it to our apple and spotify as well so definitely want to check out that season preview and we'll bring ethan back on as a regular um and something we talked about on that podcast is the mountaineer starting five lineup it looking yeah. like it'll be Keedy johnson at the one uh kobe johnson at the two Eric Stevenson, Emmett Matthews, and then Bell at the five. So yep. that's a pretty good lineup. Definitely a lot of fresh faces. Uh, Emmett Matthews comes back um, after taking a year. He was out at Washington yep. um, and then comes back here, which is always great to to see him. And especially as we were talking about with Ethan Bach, not we don't know what was in Emmett Matthews' head, but to see how things are kind of done another way and then choose to come back for Bob Huggins. Those are players you want on this team. Yeah, no doubt. And Eric Stevenson, also a Frank Martin guy. Trey Mitchell will eventually go into the starting lineup. I think I'm forecasting that. Mm-hmm. I don't know when he's scheduled to be back. It's maybe the pick game, maybe Portland, but I don't think he's going to be available tonight. So I wouldn't count on him. So I think that starting five that you name will be the starting five that they run out on the carpet tonight. Yeah. And I think, so you kind of called this game and I, it's not to overshoot it, but you called this game kind of a buy game, right? Yes. It's you pay them to come to town, but you know, your 17 point favorites, but you also can't rest on your laurels. So for tonight going into this game, especially a Mount St. Mary's team, that's, I mean, they just, they were in the NEC last year. They're now in the 
the Mac, the M A A C. Yeah, the, uh, the Mac. Yeah, yeah, the Mac. <laughs> where uh, Rick Patino, where they play Iona. So yep. definitely moving up in this world, Mount St. Mary's, and good for them. And hey, it's a little different. These mid major schools, I mean, it's not like football. It's where you have to do, you know, one double A uh, and then one A or FCS, FBS. I mean, these, we see it all the time in March Madness that these teams, they come and play and they have a chance of upsetting. So how did the Mountaineers avoid this upset tonight? So number one, I, and you touch on it, like with the mid majors, it's a tough matchup for, let's say a Jimmy bell, Mm -hmm. the five man, because at the mid major level, you're getting a lot of guys that are undersized at the four and five positions and they can shoot the ball. They can bounce it. So in the again the Big Twelve, you're banging on a six ten, six eleven other guy in the on the block. But when you play some of these smaller schools, and that's why we see so many upsets in March Madness, is they can exploit that matchup with these bigs by dragging them away from the rim, and that's why you see back cuts and layups and yep. stuff. But I think my number one key tonight, and this is a micro and macro of the season. Sure. Get back to being West Virginia and Bob Huggins and playing that brand of basketball. Defense and winning the battle on the glass. That's who West Virginia basketball has been for 15 years under Bob Huggins. And it wasn't last year. And that's why we had a down year. And everybody's still got a bad taste in their mouth. Bob, from Hugs all the way down in that program, the fan base. Um, We need to get on a uh, good, good, uh, good start tonight. So, don't look ahead to Pitt. I know Pitt's on Friday. The only thing that matters is Mount St. Mary's tonight. Absolutely. Play play for now. Play today yes. and focus on tomorrow. Something for me and I notice is I would always joke around. I'd be an unofficial season ticket holder from yes. last year because, you know, you worked for the team and were able to get me into games with the tickets that you got is a big thing for me is, and Huggins was talking about it kind of, what was it, a month or two ago. He's like, what's different about this team, especially kind of being, you know, year two of the transfer portal as opposed to last year's team. And Huggins said, these shots go in. And that's Mm -hmm. something that's big for me is absolutely, you're right. You know, play that Bob Huggins style of basketball, you know, grind it out. We'll probably never see Press Virginia again, but at least the ideology of Press Virginia is a very important thing. But for me is, yeah, you still have to score more points than the other team. You know, some of those, you can't score defensive points. Uh, You know, a block shot doesn't count for any points. It's great, but it it doesn't count for any points. So I would always joke around. It seemed like last year I would go to, you know, a West Virginia Mountaineers game and then a game of volleyball would break out under the net because some guy would go up for a layup miss, the next layup miss. And then, so, you know, it's like four or five and then the other team has it. So, you know, of of course, get those layups in initially, but you know, so you're not going to make them all is okay. You miss it. Go right back up strong. And I think that's really important. And I think that's what Jimmy bell brings um, a player that can do that. And I think definitely leaning into Stevenson, Eric Stevenson to make those shots and be that guy, especially coming from South Carolina, coming from that Frank Martin style of play um, will definitely help. But that is definitely on obviously today's game and a whole season thing is yes. you got to, you got to make those first, even second chance shots. You can't be going, especially teams like Kansas and Baylor, um, third, fourth, fifth times, and then still missing it and, you know, turn the ball over. So that's definitely something I'll be looking for. Yeah, no doubt. And you touch on another point, and that was my second key to winning tonight. Ball pressure. Mm-hmm. Edie Johnson, Joe Tucson, those two are as good as anybody on the ball. So when they play together, we can get really, really good ball pressure, turn turn our opponents over. It's not press Virginia. But we can be press Virginia in the half court in a way. So half court press Virginia. There you go. No, and nothing wrong with that. And yeah. it's it's it makes sense. I mean, Bob Huggins is as good as anyone. Is you have to make team adjustments. You have to be aware of your strengths and weaknesses. And just because your team can't be press Virginia from the mid tens doesn't mean you can't still, as we were just saying, have that ideology. Press from half court. Still play that good fundamental basketball and you know, just stay on top of it. We're just going to out grind you. And going back to exactly what you're saying is don't focus so much on what Mount St. Mary's is doing. Of course, play to them, but play your style. Don't, yes. don't let them get out of your style. And that's how mid majors do such a good job is they're able to get these, you know, power five conference guys. You see it tournament time. You see it throughout the year in the non-con is they get them out of their style of play. So you avoid that at any cost, come out tonight with a solid win. And Hey, we're on to the backyard brawl Friday. Yeah, no doubt. It's, it's about establishing our identity tonight and worry about Pitt when we get to Pitt. So, yes, take care of business tonight, and then we'll worry about the backyard brawl on Friday night. Absolutely love it. So, fun game ahead. This game tonight is going to be on the Big 12 Network, ESPN+. Plus. Um, obviously, it'll be from the Coliseum here. Game's at 7 o'clock. Excited to be there, and I think there's still tickets available for everyone else out there. 
uh, the rest of the big, as you were saying, Ryan, the rest of the big 12 is on tonight with Baylor starting here at 12 o'clock against Mississippi Valley state. Baylor comes into that game as 44 point favorites. <laughs> um, Omaha takes on Kansas. All the big 12 is home tonight, obviously being the favorites. self-imposed Kansas, yeah, self-imposed Kansas. Oh yeah. The, the bill self self-imposed Kansas. I just, yeah. I love the playoff of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That'll really stop them from what they're doing. So Omaha goes to Lawrence. They're 34 point favorites. Arkansas pine bluff um, goes to TCU. Uh, TCU's 35 and a half point favorite. Sam Houston takes on Oklahoma, Oklahoma, 16 point favorites. Uh, I, I love this school. I, U, P, U, I, Hey, they had walk-on tryouts last year. So hopefully they're a little better than they were uh, last year. Too bad. Our amateur status is, is up, Ryan, or we <laughs> I, could be making yeah, some NIL money eligibility left. Yeah. They take on Iowa state, um, in Ames, of course, uh, Iowa state's 29 point favorites. UTEP takes on number 12, Texas, uh, Texas, 22 and a half point favorites. Northwestern state, uh, takes on Texas tech. Texas Tech is 28 and a half point favorites. Uh, UT Arlington takes on Oklahoma State. Uh, Oklahoma State's two, uh, 21 and a half point favorites. And UT Rio Grande takes on Kansas State and Kansas State's 18 point favorites. So my former boss. There you at, go. Uh, Rio Grande Valley, Matt Figger, associate head coach of the Final Four South Carolina Gamecocks and former Austin P. Governor head coach. Love it. So all the Big 12 are heavy favorites tonight uh, with the range being West Virginia at minus 17 through uh, Baylor at minus 44 and already Ryan is we have half the big 12 ranked and I think it's what we'll probably see especially as we go on to you know conference play at the start of the mm-hmm. new year is the big 12 is going to do what the big 12 does and probably everyone will beat each other up and no doubt seven to eight teams will make the tournament and the other two probably should have made the tournament if if they did things right so I'm looking most most forward outside of West Virginia obviously to UTEP at Texas because UTEP their head coach is Joe Golding, who was the head coach at Abilene Christian two years ago when they went uh, when they beat Shaka Smart in the first round of the NCAA tournament. And him and Chris Beard are best friends. So they go way back. And so UTEP, Texas, I think that game is a little closer than people will realize. It's it's that game that's going to be on the ticker that's maybe a 10-point game with 10 to go. So maybe. all I heard from that was horns down. Yeah, horns down. <laughs> I think, horns down podcast. There we go. I, I think that's a that's a good ending point. Go Mountaineers. Good luck tonight. Beat Mount St. Mary's. We'll be at the game, Ryan. Looking forward to that. Come yep. up to us if you see us there. Always uh, looking to meet people and uh, always great to see Mountaineer fans. And then, of course, we'll end on a good horns down. Yep. Love y'all. Later. Go ears.